الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم So continuing our lesson we're looking at every Saturday the meanings of some of the things that we say again and again throughout the day in our prayers. So today's lesson is very short. Now we want to get into the Salah itself. So we discussed the meanings of Surah Al-Fatiha, that we ask Allah for guidance every single day of our life, many, many times. But now to get into the prayer itself, the Salah. You know, the Salah is such a beautiful institution and if we realize what we're doing, who we're talking to, what dimension we're in, our salah would be very different. So today I just want to look at two things. The meaning of two expressions. The beginning of the salah and the end of the salah. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he narrates from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in a sound hadith that the Prophet said, Miftahu salah at tuhur the key to the salah is purity or the ablution, the wudu that we make. Miftahu salah at tuhur wa tahrimuha at takbir wa tahliluha at taslim. So the key to the prayer is wudu, but the sanctity of the prayer is with takbir, and that sanctity, that state ends with taslim. So you have two things takbir and taslim. The prayer begins with takbir when you say Allahu Akbar and it ends with taslim when you say Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullah. So the Prophet said tahrimu, tahrimuha at takbir wa tahliluha at taslim. So tahrim means that you know the salah is a, is a state of sanctity. It's a state tahrim comes from the word haram. So when we're in prayer, many things become haram. It's a sacred state. We can't talk. We can't eat, we can't respond to people. We're in a communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does that begin? The Prophet said with takbir, when you say Allahu Akbar. And it ends, tahleel means to open or to make permissible. So that state of inviolability, that state of sanctity ends with the taslim. So what's the meaning of these two words? And we'll end with that, Allahu Akbar. What does Allahu Akbar mean? How is it commonly translated? Let me hear from you guys. What is Allahu Akbar? How would you translate to your friends? God is great. Okay, that's what we hear all the time, right? But you know, it doesn't mean God is great. God is great would be Allahu Azimun or Allahu Kabirun. We say Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar is such a beautiful expression. And it's one of the symbols of Islam. Allahu Akbar, everyone, you know, any non-Muslim hears Allahu Akbar, they know this is about Muslims. This is a symbol of Islam. And you'll find it in the media and they always translate it as God is great and things like that. But Allahu Akbar means Allah is greater. Not just great. But greater than what? You know, that is left for you. So when you enter the prayer, for instance, what are we saying? We're saying Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than whatever we're leaving. Greater than our bank accounts. Greater than our jobs. You know, we take five times a day or more than that to communicate with Allah. You know, we leave whatever we're doing and we're reminding ourselves it all begins by saying Allahu Akbar. You know, our job is important, but Allah is more important. So Allahu Akbar, that's how we begin Salah. You know, we're leaving our children behind. They're important, but Allah is more important. We're leaving our bills behind. We have to take care of the bills, but Allah is more important. In our jobs, we're leaving our co-workers behind. I'm leaving the patients in the next door. But Allah is greater than that. So for a few moments we remind ourselves, Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than that. The Shaykh recited, فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ Allah reminds the same reality in different ways. فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ How exalted is Allah, the King, the Truth. So we're saying Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. And He's greater than every single thing that's in our lives. Okay. So we end that prayer with taslim. Now look at the connection. What do we say at the end of the salah? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to the right and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to the left. Now taslim or salam in, in, in Arabic, there's three forms. The basic form is assalamu alaikum, which means peace be upon you. Then there's a second form, uh, which is 
I'll, I'll relate to you a hadith from Imran ibn Hussein, where a man came and he said, Assalamu alaikum to the Prophet. And the Prophet responded to Islam, the man sat down. And the Prophet said, 10. Then another man came and he came to the Prophet and he said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And the Prophet responded to him with the same greeting. And that man sat down, the Prophet said, 20. And then a third man came and he said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May the peace of Allah be upon you and his mercy and his, and his blessings. And the Prophet responded and he said, 30. And he taught the companions that those, those are the three types of salam. For the first one is 10 hasanat. The second one where we add wa rahmatullah, you get 20 hasanat. And the third greeting with the full form where you add wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, you get 30 hasanat. So this is, these are the three forms of taslim. Now in salah, it's very similar. But in the majority of narrations, we find that the, 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 the way we do it in salah, from Ibn Umar, from Jabir and others, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And there are some narrations from um, Wa'il ibn Hajar, for instance, that um, the Prophet made taslim by saying the whole thing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Some of the scholars say the first form is more sound when you include the two things and not the third thing, at least in our prayers. But let's pause for a moment. What are we saying? Now look at the connection. Salah is a communication with Allah. We leave everything behind and we say Allahu Akbar and we enter a different world. Then what do we do at the end? We come back to the world. And what do we do? We look to the right, we look to the left. In the beginning, what do we, we say Allahu Akbar, we look down. You can't look around in salah. You have to look down in the place of sajda. But at the end of the salah, you look to the right and you look to the left. What are you saying? You're wishing, you're making a supplication for the world, for the dunya, for everyone in the world. You're saying, Assalamu Alaikum, peace be upon you, Wa rahmatullah and the mercy of Allah wa barakatuhu and the blessings of Allah in some of the narrations. So look at the divine connection, brothers and sisters. The connection is when you enter salah, you're communicating with Allah. It's about exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the greatest. But then after a few moments, you have to come back to the dunya. Allah sends you right back. And He makes you look to the right, to the left. And what do you do? What's your interaction with the dunya? Three things. Salam, peace, rahma, which is mercy, and baraka, which is blessing. What are we wishing upon the world? Rahma, blessings, baraka, and salam. Salam doesn't just mean peace. Salam means peace. It also means protection. Like there's a hadith, al muslimu man salim al muslimun min lisanihi wa, wa yadihi. That the Muslim is the one from whom the other Muslims are safe with respect to his tongue and his hands. So salam means safety, it means security, it means stability. So brothers and sisters, we make salah so many times a day. And at the end of our prayers, you know, we, we magnify Allah, we glorify Allah, and we communicate with Allah. But at the end, we come back to the dunya. And what do we wish to the world? Nothing but peace and security and stability and mercy and blessing. And this is for the whole world, not just for Muslims. So we need to ask ourselves, are we a source of rahmah? and barakah and salam in the world? Are we bringing peace and stability to the world, to the environment, to our communities around us? Or are we not? If we're not, then something is wrong. We're not really praying. We don't really understand what we're saying. So when you find in the Muslim world, you know, suicide bombings in the masajid, 80 people dead, all these fightings going on, husband killing, killing their wives and things like that, all sorts of things all around us. That means we don't really pray. We don't really understand what we're saying. We're not saying, we say Allahu Akbar with our mouths, but they're just words. And we say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, but they're just words. When you meet your brother and you say Assalamu Alaikum, peace be upon you, can you stab that brother in the back? Can you harm him? That's what we're doing. We're saying peace be upon you, but at the same time with the other hand we have a knife. So really these are just words. Unless we understand these words, things are not going to change. We should understand the magnitude and the, the, the virtue of salah. We're communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is teaching us these profound lessons in the way that we pray, what we say in the beginning, at the end, and in the movements of the salah. May Allah make all of us people who pray properly, who understand what we say, and who are a source of mercy and stability and security and peace for the world all around us.
محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم